is what sorts of things help other people that we know that are addicted? What really helps? Mm -hmm. Right? Not, uh, not what could help, but what really helps? Mm -hmm. And are there certain people for whom it's hopeless? I mean, I don't like to hold the conversation that way, but I wouldn't be close to the real life data if, if I didn't ask, is it, is it hopeless? Are there people who just will not be able to quit their substance use or their addictive behavior, despite, I have to assume, really wanting to? Yeah. Yeah. So there, there are people who will die of their disease of addiction, you know, and I think conceptualizing it as a disease is a helpful frame. There are other frames that we could use, but I do think given the brain physiologic changes that occur with sustained heavy drug use and what we know happens to the brain, it, it is really reasonable to think of it as a brain disease. And, and for me, the real window of, let's say, being able to access my compassion around people who are repeat relapsers, even when their life is so much better when they're in oh, recovery. Yeah. yeah. It's like, yeah. it's like a no brainer, right? Um, is, is to conceptualize this balance and the dopamine deficit state and a balance tilt, tilted to the side of pain. And to imagine that for some people after a month or six months, or maybe even six years, their balance is still tipped to the side of pain, that on some level, that balance has lost its resilience and its ability to restore homeostasis. It's almost like the hinge on that balance yes, is messed up. exactly. And so, I mean, for, for someone who's never experienced addiction like yourself, maybe one one way to conceptualize it is- Well, I didn't say that. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, I, 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 I was not, <laughs> I, to be clear, I, I was not referring to myself, but I, I, I in this example I was given, I, if I were, I, I would I would um, come clean. I, I would reveal that. Um, but I, I think that, especially after hearing some of your lectures and descriptions of the range of things that are addic addictive, yeah. I think- um, I've been fortunate. I don't have a propensity for drugs or alcohol. Right. Okay. I'm, lu I'm lucky in that right, way right. that I, frankly, if they remove all the alcohol from the planet, I'll just be relieved because no one will offer it to me. anymore. Right. Right. So don't send me any alcohol. <laughs> uh, it won't go to me. Right. Um, but, uh, but I don't have that. Um, I like to think I have the compassion, um, but I don't have that uh, empathy for, you know, taking a really good situation and what from the outside looks right. to be throwing it in right. the trash. Yeah. So, okay. You know? So, so is that, let, let me, and this is really, I think important because I, I also had to come to an understanding of this. And I feel that I have in my 20 years of seeing these patients. And of course, addiction is a spectrum disease, sure. right? And so you've got the severe end of things. Um, Imagine that you had an itch somewhere on your body, okay? And it was, in, I mean, we've all had that, like, you know, whatever the source. It was super, super itchy. You can go for, uh, you know, if you really focus, you could go for a pretty good amount of time not scratching it. But the moment you stopped focusing on not scratching it, you would scratch it. And maybe you do it while you were asleep, right? That, so, and that is what happens to people with severe addiction. That balance is essentially broken. Homeostasis does not get restored despite sustained abstinence. They're living with that constant specter of that pull. It never goes away. So let me say there are lots of people with addiction for whom that does go away. And it goes away at four weeks for many of them. But in severe cases, that's always there and it's lingering. And it's the moment when they're not focusing on not using, it's like a reflex, they fall back into it. It's not purposeful, it's not because they wanna get high, it's not because they value using drugs more than they do their family, none of that. It's that really they, they, they cannot not do it when given the opportunity and that moment when they're not thinking about it. Does that make sense? That's a great description. And actually in that description, I can feel a bit of empathy because the way you describe scratching an itch in your sleep. Yeah. You know, I've I've done that with mosquito bites in right. summer. You're scratching, you're like, oh, you right. wake up scratching that, right. that, that mosquito bite. And I also have to admit that I've experienced not feeling like I want to pick up my phone because it's so rewarding, but just finding myself doing it. 